Hello again, my fellow pilots and aircraft maintenance personnel. Your host is always Haysam Ali, and I'm an aviation technical instructor. Welcome to my aviation nuggets for today. Today, we will have short minutes regarding the Airbus A320 thrust reverser system. And this is dedicated to the engine V2500. V2500. As you can see, the thrust reverser system is hydraulically actuated utilizing the aircraft hydraulic pressure from the corresponding engine so each engine supply its own reverse green hydraulic system supply reverser one for engine number one and yellow hydraulic system supply the reverser for engine two okay everybody so what about the type of the thrust reverser of the v2500 engine it is of the aerodynamic blockage type. Aerodynamic blockage type. We have two translating sleeves on each C duct. They are moving forward. Each translating sleeve is powered by two actuators. Upper actuator and a lower actuator. Upper actuator and lower actuator. When the translating sleeve going forward, they moving a 10 blocker doors that they will direct or redirect the fan the charge air into forward mo motion or forward movement to do a reverse thrust okay so also in the translating sleeve going aft cascade veins will be exposed to redirect the fan the charge air flow into the forward direction but with a certain angles but with a certain angle to protect the critical area of the aircraft. So, again, each translating sleeve is powered by two hydraulic actuators, one upper actuator and one lower actuator. What is the difference between these uh, two actuators? The upper actuator is an LVDT actuator. It's called upper non-looking actuator, which do have an LVDT, linear variable differential transducer. This LVDT measure the uh, uh, shooting of each actuator. If the uh, thrust reverser at 10%, at 15%. And if I need to tell you the function of this LVDT, it is for indication on ECAM. Reverse in green will come if both upper actuator see that the uh, thrust reverser fully deploy at 95%, at 95%. Okay, so also the LVDT on the upper actuator tells the EEC about the status of the thrust reverse. If any uncommanded movement sense it in flight, the LVDT will tell the EEC and the EEC will do the protection, the safety feature in flight. Maybe you hear about auto restore or auto idle. Yes. If an uncommanded movement of the thrust reverser happen in flight for more than 10%, an auto restore is energized or is asked by the EEC. And if the LVDT sends the thrust reverser open in flight for more than 15%, an auto idle is asked by the EEC and the engine will go automatically to idle power even if it is if it is uh, was working on a high power setting so the safety feature in flight to protect the aircraft from inadvertent thrust reversal deployment is depending on the LVDT linear variable differential transducer so what about the lower actuators? They are called looking actuator, lower looking actuator, and they do have the lock sensor and the lock latch on the lower actuator. Lock sensor are there to see that if the thrust reverser is locked or unlocked or stowed or unstowed. If any one lock sensor sense that the thrust reverser is open, or the uh, sleeve is not locked, a reverse in amber coming on the EBER dial, engine pressure ratio dial. Okay. So the normal indication for the thrust reverse come on the on the middle 
of the Eber dial. No indication thrust reverser fully stowed and locked. Reverse in amber thrust reverser in transit. This reverse in amber indication will come if anyone locks sensor says that the thrust reverser is unlocked. And reverse in green will come if both upper actuator from the LVDT shows that the translating sleeve is fully deployed. So that reverse in green will come in the middle of an E bar dial. E bar dial. Okay, everybody. Thrust reverser, everybody need to operate on ground only. On ground only. So we have three line of defense to assure that the thrust reverser will only operate on ground. Primary line of defense, secondary line of defense, and the third line of defense. What computer control this three line of defense and they need to agree for the operation of thrust reverse? EEC manage the primary line of defense or first line of defense. EIU manage the secondary line of defense. And the sick manage the third line of defense. Third line of defense. Okay, so what is the difference between primary line of defense, secondary line of defense, and third line of defense? You can monitor here that the third line of defense or third line of defense is managed by an airframe computer, which is a spoiler elevator computer. You need everybody to know that the third line of defense must be managed by an independent computer other than engine computer. So uh, we are always called the third line of defense an independent line of defense because we have an independent computer, not an engine computer, which is an airframe system computer. And we have an independent shot of valve. Okay, so these three computer, EEC, EIU, and the SEC must agree to operate and to deploy the thrust reverser. The thrust reverser. Okay. Each computer, everybody need to assure from a certain condition. Each computer need to assure from a certain condition. For example, the EIU need to assure from the LGCIU that the aircraft is on ground, landing gear compressed. The SIC must assure from the radio altimeter through the landing gear control interface unit that the aircraft altitude is less than 10 feet, is less than 10 feet. And the EEC must assure that the other engine is on idle, is on idle. Okay, so from where the input is coming to ask for thrust reverser? from the throttle control lever. So, pilot must manually select the thrust reverse by releasing the reverser latching lever and taking the throttle control lever from idle to reverse idle. Uh, idle stop it at zero degree and reverse idle is at minus six. So, we have three angles in the reverse sector ask for thrust reverser. They are minus three, minus 3.8 and minus 4.2. So this angle come from three components inside the throttle control unit underneath the throttle control lever. We have potentiometer, resolver, and switch. The potentiometer will ask the SEC at minus three throttle lever angle to allow thrust reverse. The switch will ask the EIU at minus 3.8 for thrust reverse. And the resolver will ask the EEC at minus 4.2 for thrust reverse. So, so at minus three, SEC receive the input of thrust reverse. At minus 3.8, the EIU will receive. And at minus 4.2, the EEC will receive. So we have three input coming from the throttle control unit underneath the throttle control lever. And inside the throttle control unit, we have potentiometer, resolvers, and switch. Okay. Three computer, EEC, EIU, and SEC. 
Three safety feature in flight if an inadvertent thrust reversal happen in flight. O2 idle, O2 restore, and O2 thrust disconnection. Okay, so you need to always remember that the LVDT will initiate this safety feature, and in any case, you as a maintenance people, if you need to deactivate thrust reversal for flight, you need to check about the status of the LVDT. You need to check about the status of the LVDT. And uh, an inoperative thrust reversal must have an operative LVDT other than the aircraft, no dispatch. Okay. So what about this component? It is called hydraulic control unit. Do have directional valve and an isolation valve. An isolation valve and a directional valve. Okay. These two valves are solenoid valves, are solenoid valves. And only hydraulic can reach the actuator if it, is, if it will pass the hydraulic control unit. Okay. The EEC can directly energize the isolation valve. But the EEC can indirectly energize the directional valve. So how the EEC can energize the solenoid of the directional valve? Only when the EIU inhibition relay is closed. So how this inhibition relay will be ready and close to allow the EEC to energize the directional valve? Only if the EEU closes this inhibition relay. So the EIU will close the inhibition relay as a second line of defense. As a second line of defense. Third line of defense. Uh, sorry, first line of defense will operate EEC. And EEC will only energize the isolation valve and directional valve only if this inhibition relay is closed. Only if this inhibition relay is closed. Okay, and you need to remember that for deploy, the EEC must energize the isolation valve and the directional valve simultaneously at the same time. So the hydraulic will reach the two chamber of the actuators, stow chamber and the deploy chamber. But due to the surface area differential between the deploy side and the stow side, the thrust reverser will deploy. So you can say that directional valve only energized for deploy. Directional valve only energized for deploy. So that in any case, the EEC only energized the isolation valve, we assure of a thrust reverse stow. Thrust reverse is two. Okay, everybody. So, the hydraulic will only reach the hydraulic control unit if this shut off valve is opening. So, hydraulic supply must pass the shut off valve, then the hydraulic can go to the hydraulic control unit, and the isolation valve must be open to allow the directional valve to reach or have the hydraulic. And the hydraulic now can go from the hydraulic control unit to the actuators. Directional valve will choose if you need to deploy or stow. If you need to deploy or stow. Okay. So again, the upper actuator is an LVDT actuator, non-looking actuators. And the lower actuator, they are looking actuators. They do have the lock sensor and a, a looking mechanism inside the lock actuator. A looking mechanism is inside the lock actuators. Okay, everybody. So, if you need to know the uh, uh, meaning of uh, EEC is an electronic engine control. EEC is an electronic engine control, which is the heart of the FADIC engine computer. Engine interface unit, EIU, is an engine interface unit. SEC is a spoiler elevator computer. Spoiler elevator computer. LGCIU is a landing gear control and interface unit. Okay. So the EIU must check that from the LGCIU that the aircraft is on ground. And the SEC must check from the radio altimeter that the aircraft is less than 10 feet or the aircraft is near ground. Also, the signal from the radio altimeter come to the SEC through the LGCIU, through the LGCIU. Okay, everybody. So, 
Sometimes you as a maintenance people need to deactivate the thrust reversal for maintenance operation. Anybody will work in the area of the engine. So we need to have safety time so that we need to deactivate the thrust reversal for maintenance. How you can only deactivate the thrust reversal for maintenance? From the hydraulic control unit. From the hydraulic control unit, we have a deactivation lever. From here, maintenance people can close manually or mechanically the isolation valve. You need to remember that when you deactivate the hydraulic from here by the deactivation lever, you are closing the isolation valve. Okay. So what about thrust reversal deactivation for flight? We need to dispatch the aircraft and we need to deactivate the reversal for a deactivated uh, uh, flight, reversal flight. So you need to do first hydraulic deactivation from the hydraulic control unit. Second, you need to do mechanical deactivation. Maintenance people must insert the lookout bin in the lookout assembly and they need to assure that the translating sleeve is locked mechanically with the sea duct. Locked mechanically with the sea duct. So that pilot, when you do walk around and they see the red bin on the translating sleeve, you need to know that maintenance people deactivates rust reverse for flight. Deactivates rust reverser for flight. And also you need to do check after that you need to do test from the MCDU on the thrust reverser to check the status of the LVDT. If the LVDT are not properly functioning, so the aircraft no dispatch. Because as I told you before, LVDT are responsible to tell the EEC, and the EEC can only do the safety feature in flight to protect the aircraft from inadvertent thrust reverser deployment. What are they again? O2 idle and O2 restore. The engine will go to idle if an inadvertent thrust reversal happens in flight, and an O2 restore will be asked or energized by the EEC if an inadvertent deployment happens in flight. Which component measure the degree or the linear movement of the actuator is the LVDT, linear variable differential transducer. Linear variable differential transducer okay everybody so i hope this short minutes allow you to recall the thrust reversal system for the v2500 engine v2500 engine again we have three line of defense and you you uh, uh, easily can say that thrust reversal operation must be agree by three computer or three line of defense need to agree that the thrust reversal can only deploy on ground only deploy on ground green system for engine one and yellow system for engine two green system for engine one and yellow system for engine two if the thrust reversal is fully stowed and locked no indication on the ebar dial if the translating sleeve move and the lock sensor senses that the sleeve is open, reverse in amber. Only if the thrust reverser is fully deployed, reverse in green will come on the e-bar dial. Reverse in green will come on the e-bar dial. Thank you for your good listening. Thank you, my fellow pilots and my aircraft maintenance personnel my fellow aircraft maintenance people for your good listening. Always fly safely and maintain your aircraft very safely. From Cairo, Egypt, your host was Haysam Ali and I'm an aviation technical instructor. Always stay tuned for an upcoming sessions like this to recall and to enhance performance. I need to say that this is not a formal training, but this is a performance support tools. This is a performance support tools, so please don't use for flight or for maintenance. This is not a formal training. This is a performance support tool. Thank you. Have a good day and goodbye.